the public hearing part of tonight's hearing or agenda. Monica. Item six, public hearing, first reading and introduction of ordinance amending Livingston Municipal Code, Title Three, Chapter 12, Dances by Ordinance Adopt a Policy that amends the requirements and fees for dance permits, resolution to adopt fee increases and requires security requirements for the issuance of a dance permit. Meeting council again. Uh, since November, uh, there's been uh, 16 dance permits that have come through uh, the Livingston Police Department. Of those 16 dance permits, uh, 10 of the event or events were applied for uh, with the uh, pre-information that alcohol would be served at those dances, which necessarily isn't a bad thing, but in examining the current city ordinance has the potential uh, to cause a serious uh, danger and a threat to the public safety in, in the city. And I'll explain further what I mean. Um, in examining the current city ordinance, uh, the code allows for two security officers to be required for every uh, 100 persons that are expected to be in attendance at the dance. I, I do believe that those are adequate levels for security guards, um, but the code doesn't uh, say anything about uh, any city officials discretion to require a police present at those events events for certain things to be considered it does however in the definition in the current code when it, or it describes security officers it says that that could be a police officer or a security guard that works for a licensed company so it's a little unclear in conducting research with other jurisdictions in the area uh, including most of them in Merced County. Uh, generally what the city ordinances uh, describe is requiring a certain number of security officers per expected attendance, and then they put the discretion back on the police department, specifically the chief of police, to concern, or consider different things that may or may not be happening at the event and suggest that there, there be a police presence there. And some of those things that are, that are considered are like the location of the public, public place where the event is going to be held, the anticipated attendance at the event, the type and character of the event, such as music that will be played, whether that's through a DJ or things that could change and kind of suggest that we may want a public or a police present there is like a live band because they are allowed to have those. And I don't think that we would have an argument to, to say that a live band could potentially uh, cause a, a greater threat to public safety than say just like a DJ. The age of the persons that are attending the event, uh, the size of the dance hall where the event's going to be held, and then uh, lastly, but, but not to include just these, uh, the day the event would be held. And I think about things like with all the festivities that I've seen go on in Livingston, let's just say that somebody wanted to have a public dance uh, during the middle of the Sweet Potato Festival. Uh, that's really gonna put up a strain on public safety. Even our friends at the fire department would be uh, in danger of, of being tapped out there as far as resources go. Um, if you guys were to pass this ordinance today, officers from the Livingston Police Department would have the opportunity to sign up for voluntary overtime to work these security events. It happens at, at other agencies all throughout the, the, the county and in the Central Valley. Um, the event or permit holder that's applying for this event, if the event met these spe special considerations, would be responsible for paying the time and a half costs for those Livingston police officers to be there at that event and provide security. Uh, the current overtime rate, current, uh, is $97 an hour. And so obviously that would de depend on how long they anticipated that event to last. Um, in the event that there were no Livingston police officers, uh, and I highly doubt that this would ever happen, who volunteer for the event over time, um, mutual aid could be requested through other agencies throughout the county, and that's similar to what we currently do right now. We've used Gustine, other uh, small police departments, and even the sheriff's department has helped out in the past. Nonetheless, we would ensure that the event happened and we would make sure that there was a police presence there if required. 
uh, giving the police department or the chief of police the ability to require this police presence, I feel brings a much greater sense of public safety and security to the city and still allows everyone to have uh, the ability to have the event and have a good time. Um, nothing in this ordinance affects anything that would happen on anyone's private property or in their residence or anything like that. And lastly, the permit fee. Um, when a dance permit for a public event like this comes into the police department, and if you guys remember me talking to you about all the different duties that our dispatchers have and running that public service window at the police department, they accept the, the permit application. There's a certain amount of research that they have to do in order for that permit to finally make it to the desk of the chief of police. Uh, I think the fee was last established according to the current city code in 1985. It's currently set at 100, and I would ask that you guys raise it to $150 to accommodate the work that goes into the, the by the personnel at the police department to make this happen. And if there's any questions, I can answer them. Any questions for um, council? I don't see any, um, so we'll be opening this up to the public. Any questions from the public? Out on the phone? I'm just kind of what she's telling me, just kind of like we were saying about having super, uh, uh, Sir, like sir, can you step up to the podium? Thank you. Yeah. I was kind of uh, listening to the uh, officer, what he was saying, having a police present at the hall, you know, have two security and one police present there because uh, we do the big making events in Merced. And Stevenson, uh, we have the sheriff's department. They work with us, uh, Stonewall Private Security. We work with the sheriffs out there. And, um, and I, was, I know what he's saying, you know what I mean? It's having a police in present and have, have two security. You know, it, sometimes things break out, you know. Sometimes we have to call the police, you know. Mm -hmm. And if there's, a, there's certain situations we can handle, but we can only handle so much. But even having a police in, in a present is even pretty good. No, I agree with it. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else on the phone? I got an email. An email? Go ahead. Yeah, hi, hello? Right, sorry, on the phone, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi, this is Dwight Lark, former resident of the city of Livingston. Um, I just wanted to comment on this item. Um, I think that uh, requiring police officers to be at private events is an overreach of government into the private lives of individuals. I don't believe that uh, the citizens will appreciate uh, police being involved in their private events. If they want to uh, invite the police officers to come and uh, party with them or whatever, that's one thing. But having security there is already required. And uh, forcing the employment uh, obligations of the city of Livingston onto the private residents that are having birthday parties or quinceañeras I just think it's a bad, bad situation that's going to lead to criminality uh, enforcement where there should be none. It should be a private event where people can get crazy and wild out and have a good time without being uh, watched by someone who's eager to criminalize their activity. Uh, that's why it's important to separate and that's why we have private security if you're going to require police officers to be involved anytime there's alcohol or dancing, then at that point, you're asking that the churches who also have alcohol and, uh, and, and uh, music uh, be looked at. So I just think it's an overreach. I think that uh, having security officers required is big enough. And, um, and I think that... Uh, you know, just people don't want more government in their life. They want less. But that's, that's my own opinion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else on the phone? Uh, I'll be closing it now. Oh, uh, I have that email. Oh, I'm sorry, the email, Monica. Um, this is from Catherine Scheel, and it states, I hope you have a pen and a paper handy because I have seven questions. First question, how much will it cost to hire two police officers for an event? Two. Would people be able to choose which officer they get, or will they just be assigned by the police chief and Livingston police officers are to be hired? Three, are there already specific officers in mind for these assignments? Four, would payment be made directly to the officers or to the city, or to city hall? 
five, would people be required to use city of Livingston officers only, or would officers from other jurisdictions be allowed? Six, would these officers be in addition to the number of security guards currently required, or would they be a replacement for two of the security guards currently required? Seven, does this apply to small events held at private homes? Thank you. Was that all? Okay. Um, it's up to the chief if. I answered every single one of those okay. except for the one about the security in addition to the police. Uh, the minimum required security guards should stand uh, in addition to the police. And just to reiterate, this is a not by any means in any event that, that has alcohol at it. It's carefully considering the, the circumstances of the event and what's going to be there. Uh, different situations would be handled different. If it's a graduation party with 100 and 150 people there, the, the, current, the current standard is just fine. It's when you put the other strains on public safety, let's say there's a live band with 300 people there and something breaks off at that place and we all know that it has the potential to do uh, nothing is left in Livingston because everything that we have is going to be dedicated to that event. This is to ensure that there's still public safety to respond to calls within the community when they're, when they're needed. And number seven, is, it, is this um, for private homes too? Absolutely not. This, the, the ordinance deals with public, public dance permits and that's it. Thank you, sir. So I'll bring it back to council uh, for any further questions or a motion on this item. Yeah, I got a question. Let's Go ahead, Council Member King. What happened? I'm sorry? Go ahead. Oh. Uh, let's assume that somebody's having a quinceanera with a live band, invited 50 guests, and ends up having 200. So would we send more officers there? Absolutely not. So oh, the, the, their expected attendance, and there's a disclaimer on the current permit that's used, that when they give us their expected attendance, and it reaches the capacity of that, they've got it there, they have an obligation to, to bring it down into to what we have the resources to handle. And if they don't, by the current ordinance, it could be shut down by the police department. Any further questions? Council Member Moran? Yes, thank you. So I see your perspective and Thinking about safety, I dealt with large crowds before and uh, actually we used to hire security from the sheriff's department. Um, and primarily the reason, even before it was required for those out in the county events, the reason we actually went ahead and invested in, in that extra additional security was as a, as a preventive measure to avoid something big happening and you know people getting hurt so i can i can i understand that if let's say there's a quinceanera and there's you know i don't know like 150 people there or 200 a fight breaks out and it just gets beyond the whoever responds locally let's say that you end up having to call extra agencies for support, who gets, who gets that bill? Will the people from the event or the owner of that hall will get that bill or, or do we just, as a city, or, or who, who gets to pay for that extra support that came in from other agencies? So as it stands right now, that's, that's under current mutual aid agreements with, within all of the agencies in the county. If, if, say for instance, the city of Livingston, there, there isn't a police present dedicated to that event and something breaks out and additional resources need to be called in, nobody gets that bill. It, they just come and, and, and do the work. Um, going back to what you said earlier, th this suggestion to add to the city ordinance is just a preventive measure um, to have that presence there to make sure that, that we do everything that we can uh, to stop something from breaking out. But there is, if there's an emergency call for assistance, there is no bill that goes to anyone. 
Okay. Would could there be a cons I mean, even like you mentioned that you are suggesting or rec making a recommendation for two officers, would would one be? And then at, at what point is it? Two hundred, three hundred, or one fifty? It's we have events right now that that are 200, 250 people, uh, and we haven't had a problem yet. I'm going back to the considerations, and it wouldn't be a, a definite two officers or one officer just because the event's 250 and there's alcohol being served. What are the other circumstances around it? You know, uh, do we take from other events like? Uh, the Sikh Parade or the Sweet Potato Festival and deplete resources for those to respond to an event. It, it's all preventive measures that I, I think that the city needs to have in place just to make sure that everything else operates smoothly like it's supposed to. So from what I'm... Uh, uh, just a minute. Are you done? Oh, he was... Go ahead and finish. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Uh, Sorry, I, I was just looking through the rest of my notes. Uh, uh, so, and I think you already mentioned this. So, even if it's in place, it doesn't mean that it will happen every single time. It will be to to the chief's discretion based on everything else that is being presented and how. Uh, Especially if there's other, so, okay, so let's say that there's two or three other events at the same, the same weekend in, in, in the city, it would be very risky to not have that additional support presence anywhere in the city in case something breaks up. Absolutely, I mean, even, even two events occurring at the same time um, our minimum staffing is a sergeant and two officers, and if something happens at one of those events, you're taking every bit of law enforcement that you have and dedicating them to whatever's happening at that event. There's nothing left for someone's house being broken into or a traffic accident, God forbid, or a robbery in, in the business district. Anything could impact that. It's just a guarantee if the certain considerations that I mentioned call for it. But it's, it's not in every event. That's where you've just got to trust the, the chief that you've hired um, to, to decide when, when this, this needs to be put into place. And I think I suggested in the code it said may, not shall. Okay. And what is your point of view considering one instead of two? anything's better than, than nothing at all. I, I wouldn't have a, a negative stance towards that whatsoever. That, like I said, anything's better than, than zero. Right now, um, if circumstances were right, we, we would be left you know, bare if, if something were to happen. Even going back and, and adding to it, the having one firefighter on duty, if there's a large disturbance there in the medical services, you're taking the ambulance that you have, the fire truck you have, and all the police officers that you have completely out of commission just to deal this with this one particular event. Okay, and then I think going back to one of the other questions on the email, and I'm not sure, maybe I didn't, I didn't hear that part, or it's not like residents can come and pick and choose, it's like, I want this. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> So it would just, you, you'll put it out as a volunteer, whoever right. signs it up and... I'll give you a perfect example. Um, we obviously, um, those community members that came out to the Sikh Parade, um, I'm pretty sure people recognize that that's not no, what's normally on duty in the city. Um, it's put it out for overtime. Hey, the Sikh Parade is on Sunday, the March 27th. We need this many uh, people and they volunteer and they sign up for it. It's, it's, it's a way for, it's overtime. All right, thank you. Um, Council Member Soto. So just to be clear, we're looking at public events, big events, not the ones that are conducted or 
events that are done, say, for instance, at the VFW hall. If someone approaches the commander and would like to hold the event there, it's, it's closed, private, only family, friends, but there's going to be a DJ and everything, and your fee schedule says you nonprofit, no fee. Um, but there'll be dancing. But they've already, and say, for instance, there's, there's only two, two buildings within the city of Livingston that can serve alcohol, which would be the VFW Hall and the Portuguese Hall, correct? Correct. And Five Rivers also has a little banquet hall. But that's, a, that's okay. Uh, it can't be rented out. It's, it's a bit, yeah. And anyways. But if they decided to have a dance there, and so this fee schedule, the only thing I'm, I'm, I'm proposing a change on the fee schedule just to back up and make sure that I get all your stuff answered is the from 100 to 150. That fee schedule that you're reading other than that dance permit fee has always been in place as far as I'm aware of. Um, anybody that has a dance in public um, has to, and I, this isn't something that I'm trying to implement as new, they have to come to the police department and get a dance permit regardless of whether security is required or a police presence is, is warranted or anything else like that, there still has to be a dance permit. And one of the reasons for that is, is every time a dance permit is pulled, there's an incident number pulled. And so anybody that comes to work that day, they start their shift knowing that there's going to be a dance or an event at this hall during that night so they know to watch out for it. Okay, so we're already taking those preventative measures, correct? We're telling them about it, but if something happens there and they have to be dedicated to that event occurring at that hall, there's nothing left to respond to anything else in the city. So what, so what this suggests is that you're wanting, you're wanting to pull two officers to be dedicated when we don't actually have the means to do it. No. Under certain circumstances, if there is a large event that has a potential to be, you know, draining on public safety in the city, require the permit applicant to pay for two police officers or one or however many on a voluntary overtime basis to dedicate to that event. Do you know how many times that's, that's happened? I mean... How many times what's happened? Okay. So, along with uh, Council Member Moran, we've, we've been around the large events, and again, we have people that have been invited, county sheriff, to our sweet potato, we've had City of Livingston has put on events that have Cinco de Mayo, um, Fourth of July, and the Sweet Potato Festival, where there is a large uh, presence of sheriff's department. Um, Gustine has been invited. We've had law enforcement on site as a preventive measure, and I think that that was kind of the what I heard was kind of the point that. Uh, Councilmember Moran was trying to make. There is a prevention there that it's uh, they're at a public event, and if dancing, you know, it's encouraged because we do have the the entertainment. We have the dance floor there, um, and there are family events. I'm just reading through some of this stuff, and and you're saying that it's it's not new. <laughs> it, like G, it says no minors can be permitted on the dance floor when there's alcohol um, at the, the public events, correct? Right, that's what it says, and I didn't put that in there. Oh. That, and I don't know that that's ever been enforced, to my knowledge. Okay, just give me a moment. Any other questions? Right, go ahead, Council. If, 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 if I might just jump in real quick, I, I, I think what you're stating is that on the report it states that no minors could be on the dance floor, but 
like when there is it's a paid event like like going to a nightclub no yeah but but i think based on the report that is my understanding that's what it refers to no minors on the dance floor right. when it's like a, a, a paid dance where alcohol is served or sold then no minors but we don't have to worry about that because we don't have any nightclubs here or or when it, or if someone if a, if a promoter was to come in, into town and try to do a paid dance where alcohol is going to be served there will need to be some additional guidelines like wristbands and and I think that's maybe the confusion that is happening here. That, that was my understanding when I read it. Okay. So maybe that's what it is. So this ordinance, back when it was originally created, is designed for just that. Nightclubs, bars, um, yearly dance permits, uh, quarterly dance permits, and, and all of those things included, like in a one-stop package deal for the entire ordinance. The police presence, uh, part of it that, that I'm requesting is specific to the public dance permits for a single day use that are happening at public halls because you're right there are no bars there are no nightclubs where any of that's happening anything further so let's say for instance in kind of this, this is taking me back a few years. So let's say there's a quinceañera, you know, just a, or a wedding or whatever it is, and they say, and, and I don't know, I haven't looked at the application, it's like, but maybe there's a question that says, will alcohol be served, yes or no? From what time to what time is alcohol not being served? So let's say that there is, that, you know, church was at 12, they get it here and then, food is arranged from four to seven, and then they specify that alcohol will, will not be served until six o'clock. Will that be taken into consideration and say, okay, I don't think you need the officer there if we were to go that route since two o'clock because there's gonna be no alcohol being served at that time until six o'clock from six to 11 per se. Absolutely. Just because there's going to be alcohol served, sold, given away, consumed, whatever, doesn't automatically mean that, that we're going to require or request a police presence. It's just for those special circumstances and consideration that could potentially put the city's public safety in, in harm's way. And when I mean harm's way, I mean by availability. And that a quinceanera is pretty much a private event. It's still held at a public dance hall, and you still have to get, and this is according to the current city ordinance, you still have to get a dance permit. Anything further? Council Member Moran? Yeah. Go ahead. I'll open it back up. I've been doing it for 20 years, 2002. Um, so uh, what we do is uh, when we get in the hall, we have an officer at the alcohol or where they serve the alcohol, and we check for IDs, make sure they're 21. Because some of the IDs I've, I've caught, there are fake IDs. Some people will make up these fake IDs, and we ca we'll, we'll catch them, people with fake IDs. And th they don't get served. If they're not 21, the law says you got to be 21. If you're under 21, we don't. We make sure they, they don't have the alcohol in their hand. So my job is I go check, I check everybody there. You know, I check their ID. And we, have a, we have like maybe two guards, one at the door and one, one at the alcohol place. So to check for ID, make sure they're 21. So, you know, we do it pretty well. But the main event, I don't know, Merced, it's a little different because when we do the Stevenson right there, we have to have the sheriffs right there when we do the big events, the bull rides. But when we're in the city of Merced Fairgrounds, um, there, there, there's no police officers inside the fairgrounds. It's just all security. The police, are, they work the outside of the, on the streets. The only time they come, we had a couple of fights. So we had to call the police, the city police to come. We detained them and they, they hauled them off to jail. So, you know, 
So we know our responsibilities and what we have to do. You know, we know the liability, you know, and, you know, having a police and present, you know, is a good thing too, you know, and um, I just feel like everybody should work together, you know what I mean? Security officer, police officer, we work together and have a bond, you know? So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, sir. Anybody else in the public since I open it back up on the phone? Nope, okay. Come back to council. Uh, for me, um, I mean, I think it's a great idea. Put yourself in the officer's position. You got a bunch of people drinking. They get in a fight. You got one officer there. He's handling the fight. Then you get more people. Um, it puts him at, at risk of something major happening there. You know, I mean, at least with another officer, um, he could watch his back. Um, same thing with the resources on the street. You have one guy there, one officer. Um, he needs backup. These guys are tied up on, I don't know, a shooting. One has to break, and they need backup from the sheriff's department. They may be on a call, and we're up in Dowhai to be the closest one. Um, he, he's dealing with issues. So by the time they get there, I mean, yeah, it, it's a risky job. Uh, we signed up. I say we. I'm in law enforcement, too. We, we signed up to protect and to serve, not to go and kill ourselves while we're working. We, we have families, too, to get try to get home to, and that's all we're trying to do to make this place safe. So just put yourself, like I said, in those officers' shoes um, while they're there, or I should say boots, um, while they're there at these events. So I think um, this would be, I mean, a great idea for the safety um, of our uh, men and women in uniform here in the city of Livingston. So with that, I would make a motion to approve item number six. Is there a second? I'd like to amend that motion, if, if okay, then I'll be able to second it. At this at this time, I... I'd like for us to consider the, the one, because um, I'm, I'm also thinking about the burden of, the financial burden. So can I stop you there for a minute? Yeah. So uh, I just, if there's no motion, we'll die this one, and then we'll... Then you can make a motion for the to do yours. That, so, okay, sure. just to make it yeah, um, right, correct, sir. Okay, so is there a second on my motion? Since I see none, um, it dies there. So, Councilman Moran. I do believe it's it's very preventive, and and I see it. You know, I I, I mean, I I saw it for many years. And I, I see the reasoning behind it. Uh, and it's all about the safety of, of everyone, not really just only the attendees, but um, everyone else, and including the uh, security officers there, the police officers in the city, and anybody else that, that would end up coming to support. Um, but I'm just kind of calculating, you know, the financial uh, side of it for anyone, um, roughly it's about a hundred dollars. Roughly, it's you know at least five six hours. That's six hundred dollars. If we had two officers there, that's twelve hundred dollars average. Um, and then at the same time, we can. Take this as a as a as a test and see how it works out, and we can always come back again and you know, and if we really see the need that it, and it's really getting out of hand, then we can up it to two, you know. Then there's no excuse. I mean, it's it's. Um, so I'm just 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 trying to kind of consider everything, but but yes, the safety of everyone involved including the officers, um, but I think even just having one, it, I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm very positive about, about the outcome of this, and I think just having the officer's presence is very preventive. Um, people will think twice about it, I mean, you know, but, uh, and I've seen it for, for, for many years, so at this moment I'd like to uh, motion can I ask a question before you make a motion yes let him finish his motion 
I'd like to motion to uh, amend this item and, and consider, for us to consider um, approving it with the change of having just one, requiring one officer instead of two, and being also, well then it will be up to the chief, whoever's the chief at that time, to consider all of the other factors. Can I ask my question? Go ahead. I got a question for the chief. Let's say somebody's having a quinceanera, for example, that's, since that's a party we're using. They want an officer there for four hours, and the party's actually having a good time. They continue to have the party more than four hours, and the officer goes on double time. So would they have to still pay overtime, or they would, the, they would have to pay double time at that time? Or does the option, I mean, is the officer, does, is he gonna have the option to say, you know what? I was only supposed to be here four hours, party's closed, I'm leaving. So it takes a lot more than four hours to get on double time. In fact, there there is no such thing as double time. No, I'm it's, talking about just in case somebody picked up extra four hours after the shift. So a lot of circumstances could be considered in that. Uh, they're, they're having a good time and they want to stay. Are they still serving alcohol? Because at that point, it, it gets even, let's just say that there was a requirement for a police presence, and they are required to stay longer because alcohol is still flowing, then yeah, they, they would probably stay there and we would have to bill them later. It's what, There's no point in sending them away once they're already there. Can I add sure. something real quick? Because, I don't know, I'm assuming and I'm just going back. If they apply for, their permit says from up until 11 o'clock. Their permit says 11 o'clock, security will stop serving liquor at 10.30. 10, it's, it's and, an hour before. And, and if it's 11 o'clock, that's the end of the permit because the dance permit was only applied up to 11 o'clock. No one, no one can stay after that, right? Correct, the permit's done. Yeah, that's it, 11 o'clock even. I, I, I seen plenty of people want to stay and party until four o'clock in the morning. Sorry, your permit says 11 o'clock. Securities will start asking people out and you have to go home and music has to stop five minutes before, 15 minutes before. Liquor needs to stop 30 minutes before, according to state law, right? Yep. And, and everyone has to leave before they leave. Um, the only ones that can stay are the people that are gonna clean up and that's it. Because otherwise they're responsible if anything happens. So, so I don't think they'll be able to to go beyond whatever the dance permit says. So I'll go ahead and um, entertain a, a second on that. You got a second? I'll make the motion a second. Uh, Monica, can we get roll call? Roll call, Council Member Soto? No. Council Member Moran? Yes. Council Member King? No. Mayor Pro Tem Garcia? Yes. Motion fell by a vote of 2-2. Two -two. Thank you, Monica. Uh